Well, hello, hello everyone. Welcome to our new event for the Design Month. So we are really, really happy to have you on board. Um, I hope everyone now is online and ready to see what we are going to present. So today we're going to be talking about our brand new Top Coder design system. So this is one of the biggest accomplishments that we have achieved inside the community, in the design community. So we are really, really happy to share this with all of you. Okay, so let's start. For many of you that probably you don't know what is a design system, basically the design system is a set of standards, okay, intended to manage design at a scale using reusable components and patterns. Why it is needed? Because it made the design easier, better, and faster, okay? So basically the design system, with a design system, we will create several UI components like buttons, form elements, typography styles, color styles. And we will be using these elements as a components, as an individual components in all the pages that we are going to design in the future. So that's why uh, this makes the designs easier, better and faster than traditional process. So how was it designed? So while we were conceptualizing this design system, we had in mind the following. With the, we had accessibility in mind. So everything that we have designed in, in this new design system, uh, we had accessibility in our mind. So every color, every font size, every element that has been placed into our design system, is going to be easy to read for everyone. So this is something very, very important in our design process. We thought in a speed of use. So this means that when a designer is using this component, they have to use these design elements really, really fast. So they don't have to be like, you know, doing some research about how to use this element. Why is that? Because we are providing documentation and also we are making every variation of the component really simple to use. And finally, we design it using atomic design. So wait a second. I know that many of you should be wondering what is atomic design? So now we are going to see what is atomic design. Atomic design is a methodology composed of five different stages working together to create interfaces, design systems, thinking in reusability. So this is very, very important. And these stages are the atoms, the molecules, the organisms, the templates, and the pages. What are the atoms? Okay, so they represent the inseparable elements that cannot be further subdivided. So if we think these atoms as a Lego set, the atoms will be the small bricks to build the toy. So every small piece that you actually use to build the final toy, that will be an atom, okay? So in our design world, the atoms are represented by color styles, icon elements, typography style, grid systems, and many, many more UI elements that you can imagine. And for our second stage, what are the molecules? These are the combination of two or more atoms. They are larger UI components, which could also be known as patterns. So these can be buttons, input forms, chips, tags, badges, and many, many more. So as you can see here, we have a button, which is a perfect sample of how a molecule works. So we are using the typography style for the label, we are using the iconography, and we are using the color. So we have three different elements merged together and they become into a molecule. So this is really, really awesome. And finally, what are the organisms? Well, these are a very large range of combination of molecules and atoms immersed together. For example, header, tabs, drop downs, tooltips. So if we think in our design world, you can put like several buttons, for example, in a header, 
to design a main navigation menu. So that will be an organism. It's a small component. It's not a full page. It's a small component made with a combination of several UI elements, such as buttons. And then if we are going to become a little bit larger, we have the templates. So these templates are page level objects that actually place components into a layout. So are made with a combination of organisms, molecules, and atoms all merged together. So as you can see in this sample, we are showing, showing you how a model template will look. So we have the buttons, we have the icon for the start, we have the four elements, we have the title, the paragraph, we have everything as a separate components. And when, when they are together, they look really, really awesome. And finally, in our atomic design methodology, we have the pages. So the pages are the full instances of how the UI will actually look like in the real representative with a real representative content in place. So a page is actually the final UI element already designed. So let's imagine we have, for example, a landing page, we can have a login page, uh, maybe a forum post page, a, a challenge detail page, detail page. So everything that you can imagine is actually a page. And we are using, as you can see in this design, the several atoms and molecules, everything together to merge the final design. But what are, what are Sorry, what are actually the real advantages with our brand new top coder design system? So this is really awesome. And I wanted to show you why. Our design system is scalable. So this means that we can add more components in the future. It's consistent and efficient. It's pixel perfect. It's designed for accessibility, as I mentioned before. It's faster to use than traditional design process. So in the past, we used to design like thinking how I am going to create the shape of the button, for example. Maybe I want round corners or maybe I want bigger buttons or maybe I want this color or, or this particular shape. Now you don't have to think on any of that because we already are providing the different styles. It's fully documented. So if you have any question, if you have any doubt, about how to use any particular component, you can just go to the documentation and you will finally see what are you looking for there. It's easier to maintain and update. So for example, if you want to change, again, the shape of a particular button, we can just change that really easy because we are using master components. And I, I am going to show you really quick uh, sorry, I'm going to stop here because I'm seeing in the chat that there are people who cannot hear me. Can, can you hear me now? Maybe if you can provide a chat or something, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, excellent. So uh, I was mentioning that uh, the design system that we created is easier to maintain and update. So let me show you what that actually means. So we are using in our design system what we call the master components, okay? The master component is actually the skeleton of a component. So I'm showing you right now the different color elements and the color palettes for the color styles that we are using. So for example, if I want to change the shape of this small element, I can just change it here using our master component and it magically will change everything else. So this is really awesome when we are using a huge design environment as we are using right now in our design system for the community. So in, if in the future we would like to change the size of the button, the shape, the typography, the, the stroke of the icon, everything can be changed with the master component. And even better, we can change as, as, we, as we are using the design component method, the, 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 sorry, as we are using the atomic design methodology, we can just go directly to our iconography and change the different style that we are maybe thinking for, for the future. And that will affect 
everything else where that particular icon is being used in the future. So this is really, really, really awesome. And finally, let me go back to my present so my presentation is loading. Okay. Let me load the side. What happened? Thank you, Internet. Okay. Perfect timing. One second. I do apologize for this. You know how the internet works. Okay. It's working now. And finally, uh, as, as I mentioned, is easy. Uh, sorry, we design and build to evolve in, to evolve in the future. So, if in the future we want to change any element in our design system for any reason, because there are new design trends, because there are new devices in the market, because we have a, maybe new rules for accessibility, for any reason that you can imagine, it's really easy to update the design system. So this will be like a living organism that will be updating and evolving in the future. So this is really awesome. Um, I'm going to show you some different numbers about our design system so you can have a better idea about what, what this actually means in the real world. So far, we have 54 components designed. And each component, please have in mind that each component is a button, is a foreign element. So every UI element that you can imagine, we have it already in our design system. Each one of these components has its own variation. So in total, we have more than 200 styles and variation. What is actually a variation? So imagine that we have a button and this button can be different sizes, like large, extra large, medium, small. Those are variations. So we have in total more than 200 variations for the different components and over 4,000 insertions. This is actually means how many times a particular component has been used. Um, also, we have planned more than 15, 15 sorry, new components and organisms. So in the future, we would like the community to have a very wide range of components to be ready to use in any particular design. We are imagining that we can provide, for example, chart elements, sliders, a UI control. So any, any new elements that you most probably are going to need to design your new interfaces, we have those components already planned. Um, also here, I am showing you a little chart, a little co comparison chart about uh, how many components we are being used in our new design. So the black bar is the, the legacy design system that we have in Tocoder, which was really, really small. We only have a few buttons elements, few elements styles. And now the blue one is our new design system components that are actually being used in real time. So I, 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 I want to show you right now how we are actually using these components in our, in our new design. So the following screens that you are going to see are screen captures of some of the designs that we are actually designing for the new products in, in Topcoder. So all of these pages that you are seeing in, in this particular showcase are being built and designed using 100% the components that I just show you here in this presentation. So for example, we have the onboarding here where you can see we have uh, chips, we have forms, we have buttons, we have uh, steppers, which are uh, the main navigation at top. All of these elements, you will, found, you will find them in our design system. Now this will be like our upcoming learn application for top coder uh, which is an awesome application you will see more of this in the future so everything is being designed by our brand new design system so these are like sample of what can you actually do when you put your hands in our design system so we are really excited about it and we and we are looking forward to see what you are going to actually design using this design system. 
So I think that this has been like too much talking right now, and you will actually want to see the design system in action. So in order to, to, to show you how to use it, the design system and the power of this design system, I want to introduce to, to you our senior product designer, Pere Vicky, who she's a, a member in our community. Um, she's the one who, who is going to be giving you a, a walk around in our brand new design system. So Vicky, the microphone is yours. Hey guys. Um, can you hear me? I'm sorry, I have to come back here because I can see. Uh, can you hear me well? Okay. Sorry for the scream, but I do go somewhere. Okay, I'm here. So uh, I'm Vicky. I'm working with Alex and the UX team uh, on the design system and on the new products. Uh, and I would like to give you some a quick presentation of how this thing looks like and how you can use it uh, during your your work. Um, I'm trying to focus both on beginners and on people who are using Figma on a on a more regular basis. So I would like to start somewhere, not there, sorry, somewhere here. So this is where you land, right? And when you register to a challenge, uh, you will get access to the forum uh, where uh, these assets has been shared. And uh, we usually share things to, uh, through uh, a Google folder where you can find uh, these three assets that, that I shared in this, uh, in this design challenge. Uh, one of them is the actual design system, this library uh, in a Figma file that you should download and import into your Figma files, I mean, into your new project or whatever is that. So this is how it looks like. It's there. Uh, it's already opened in my, um, in my Figma tool. And uh, let me see what I would like to talk about. So firstly, uh, in this file, which we try to plan in a way that you guys can use it easily, it doesn't look like this in our side. It looks more complicated, but we try to make it easy for you. Uh, so we have two pages in this file. One of them will be the one on which you will work. And the other one is the one which uh, contains uh, the elements, the components, the design system and the documentation and everything. Let's look at that first. So if you look at the screen, you can actually see the, the entire design system. The thing that we are talking about since <laughs> weeks, um, I would advise you to firstly look at this. So hit that page and then uh, take your time to, to look around here because that's how you will understand what kind of components we have. Uh, so you don't have to uh, recreate something that is already there. Uh, so I would, I would really go through all the documentation. Uh, you have a couple of rules there. Um, it, it talks about the variants and everything you can, you can imagine. Uh, it is also organized in a way as Alex uh, introduced us to the atomic design. So we have the atoms, the molecules, and so on and so forth. So basically, as you would read the page, I would advise you to start from the top and just look around here. What what, what do we have in uh, this design system? So firstly, you will find our grids, the typography, uh, the colors, and everything else that Alex was talking about in the last couple of minutes, including um, including some branding, so like our logo, for instance. And as you approach downwards here to the molecules, you will find the more complex uh, little components like the buttons, the in all the inputs, uh, I mean, form inputs. Um, 
what we would like to ask, and it's also in the design uh, challenge specification, is that please do not touch these elements. I mean, this is your file, so you can do whatever you want with that, but it's very important for us to be able to uh, transfer the, the, win, the winning file, I mean, the winner's source file back into our environment. And we can only do that if these elements are not modified. So it's not that we are strict and trying to be rude to you, but please uh, don't don't detach and don't modify these elements, especially not the the top ones, the master components. But you can take a look around how they are used. You can I think you can learn a lot from from uh, from these structures if you haven't used them so far. Uh, so that would be, I think that would be the first thing I would do with this file. I would really look around here and check out everything uh, I can. And we have the more complex uh, elements here, like you, like you saw the navigation, the folder, and everything else we are using. Uh, and as we are approaching the bottom, even more complex elements. And at the end, we uh, end up at, the, at these pages which we created, and you probably have seen it before on our other page uh, in our Figma file. And I figured out that I would provide you with one of these components on this, uh, on this page, uh, where you could start your work, actually. And um, where should I start? <laughs> uh, there are so many things here. Uh, let's leave this a little bit behind. I would like to uh, show something to those who are not that familiar with Figma, maybe. Uh, and these would be the text styles and uh, the color styles we have. Let me just create a rectangle here and through which, uh, through which I can um, show you these uh, colors where you can find the colors. Uh, it would be on, on this uh, right side panel uh, if I want to change the fill color of this rectangle, then I would have to click on this little icon. And here is where we can find all the color styles that we have in the design system. So you don't have to go back to the other page and grab the color code or something like that. You actually have this in the file. Um, and that is why we are asking you to work in this file, because otherwise you, you don't have these links. You don't have, you wouldn't have access to uh, either the components or these styles. Uh, I can set this to the list so it would be easier, maybe easier for you to uh, to grab one of these um, colors from here. What is uh, important uh, in our color styles is that Alex created for us um, a distinct group of colors which are, which can be used for font um, on white background because uh, he he wanted to make sure that these uh, the copy the text will be accessible if if someone's about to use colors or even the, these black and, and gray styles so the, only these are the, the colors that you can use for for text making sure that it will be accessible and all the other colors so you have other groups of colors for instance for purple we have more if you are scrolling down, you will find all of them like this. Okay. So maybe I can color this to red and <laughs> that's it. And uh, for for more beginner people, uh, it's, it's very good because you can just, uh, if I have more of these rectangles, I can select them and then I can at once I can, you know, I can change the color and I can make sure that these colors would fit the design. I mean the uh, the design. I mean the design system. Okay, a similar thing with text. I'm just typing something. And actually, text styles work uh, similarly to uh, to color styles. On the side, if you open this drop down, you will find our uh, text styles, and that would be important for us to keep with these. So if it's not absolutely necessary for something very special, like we have a, a current Alive Challenge uh, that is about designing the certificates for the learning, for the Learn app. 
probably there people would like to use other sizes of uh, of, the, of these uh, fonts however um, probably they shouldn't use other other uh, font types you know uh, only these two which we have here uh, so we would like to ask you to, to add here to these and you have a plenty so you won't feel like you don't have enough uh, for any reason if you would like to check what kind of font is, I mean what 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 are the settings here I will just select one doesn't matter any of them and if we would if I would like to check what's this what's the setting of this font exactly then I can detach it which I wouldn't recommend but so if you would like to see the settings you see so you, you can detach it and then you can check out what kind of you know variations of the font is used what's the size uh, but then please don't do that I mean please don't leave things like this in the design because uh, then it would be very hard for us to transfer it back uh, to our environment and then one more thing that works a little bit differently is the grid system. I mean, our grids, we have some grids uh, set up in the file, uh, which you can show by control G and it will be, as you can see with the uh, light purple or blue color, you can see our grids as well and make use of them. And uh, I think I can, now I can show you this, uh, huge component, this very complex component, which is this page, page template. So that's a component, but we obviously we have to let you detach that because we would like you to work on that and uh, modify things. So I will detach it, which means that it's not any longer uh, linked to the design system. However, it's nested elements like you can see that the navigation that's still linked and we would like that to stay that way if, if if you like the breadcrumbs as well and the footer as well these are um, global elements in a in a way that um, on the platform everything will use these uh, and we don't want to modify them uh, then another interesting feature is that this page is set up in a way that if you if you would like to check how it would look like on a wider screen, you can just uh, make it make the outer frame uh, wider and it would show you how our team and the product team decided to handle the content, which was uh, we are working on 1440 pixel uh, wide frames. And then if anyone would have a wider screen, then it means that the content would, would still stay in that width so and i try to make sure that this component can replicate this uh, behavior so uh, anytime i'm working on something i can still check how it would look on a wider screen like i also have a wider screen and if i um let me show you it's 1440 if i check my prototype then you can see that it's a smaller screen within my screen which is so if I'm looking at it, it's not realistic. So if I change it to my screen size, although it will be shorter now, but you will understand what I want to say. Now it fits my screen. So this is how it will look if I visited this, this page. But you don't really have to. So you don't have to design for that. But if uh, during your design process, you would like to check these things that, or even work in a wider screen, because you also have a wider screen that you can do that. But at the end, you should put it back to 1440. Okay, uh, let's talk a little bit about components. Mm. Components, these beautiful components. I selected the navigation, right? And then on the right side, oopsie, what was there? There is something wrong here. Mm. Ooh. We might run into things like this because I have to tell you that two days before we uh, launched the challenge, Figma got a huge update, which means that hmm, there we are, which means that um, 
we would probably have to change a lot of components because uh, there are awesome new features. Uh, we will uh, post an article about it shortly. It, they are great, but it means that you have to start to think about your components in a little bit different way. So if I select this component now, um, I have the variants, right? Variants are variations of the same component. So we have the navigation and then on the side, I can select how many uh, menu items I would like to see, let's say four, which means that I don't have to create anything. It's there because the component has it. Then the very interesting part is that I can open up the, whole, the, the entire structure of this component, which would mean that uh, at the end, I will somewhere find the right side. Yeah. Uh oh, I have some issues with this, um, with the links, unfortunately, mm, which is not good. You know what? Let me go back to our um, our version. And then it will be easier to show these things if I knew where it is. So actually, this is the same thing, grabbing it. And then it's just that we have white background, sorry. So, so I select the component again, add some more menu uh, elements if I wanted to, and then start to dig deeper in the right side because you know you might have some other states for instance the logged out state or the logged in state that we can see right now um, which i can select myself uh, from the other variants uh, let's see maybe the cd only which means that i can in an instance change the, the entire navigation into a logged out state which is great. I'm a big fan of variants, to be honest. And with the new functions, it's awesome. Then we have another one, which is search an avatar. So you have a little search icon there. And then, whoops. And then what else we have? I think that we, yeah, we can, we can actually go even further. Let's see. We can go even further. And now I have the only the avatar cho uh, chosen, I mean, selected uh which i could change to initials so if someone doesn't have um, a profile picture then we will have just uh their initials in you know a colored circle you know uh and very easily i don't have to design anything anymore because it's designed already i can just change the variant and done which is awesome makes your your life much easier and gives you guys who are competing in these challenges, um, give you guys more time to, to actually deal with the problem, not, not with, um, with these kind of uh, decisions. Then we uh, can select the breadcrumbs, which works the same way if it would be, uh, I'm facing some problems. I don't know why, uh, to be honest. I have something wrong opened. Anyway, I will show it on this one. Breadcrumbs. I just selected one. And now, as I uh, copied it, it would mean that it, uh, I get a component just as I was just placing it from from our assets uh, from the list. So these breadcrumbs, for instance. Uh, this is not that complex. It's just that you can select how many levels you have on the breadcrumb. For instance, we have three, then you can select the number three, and then you can see that I instantly changed this variant to this one. <laughs> and then what else we could, we could see? Let me come back here. Same thing with the titles but it's not working for some reason. So uh, I come back here to our large design system. I selected the title section. Um, 
uh, where we have several again where we have some several variants for for the same component uh if you if you look at the side here to these uh settings if you like to, uh, to the properties you can see that this component for instance have like four proper properties so you can have like you know a lot of variants for instance you can select if you want to see a city if you want to see a button on the side or not or if you would like to uh, see these uh these tags on the bottom at the bottom uh, of the title or not and then also i don't know what will happen if i change this now to mobile probably it will look silly but we also have the mobile version obviously you wouldn't use it here but if you have a mo if you have to design for mobile then it's also an easy task because you can just click i mean uh, modify the select the the property and then you have the mobile title there which is again awesome then at the bottom that's another component which we call bottom cta uh because uh, we realized that um, when we were uh, working on different products, uh, that this is kind of a pattern. So many products, like maybe you have seen our new onboarding uh, flow, if you are new to Top Coder, that for instance, onboarding and other uh, pages where you where, where the user or where the visitor have some kind of, so where there is an action and then you, you have to initiate that. Uh, at the bottom, we have, we have this button so we decided to create a component for this which is here as you can see again we have four different uh properties that we could set for instance i can switch on a back button oops okay not here for some reason and this is tricky we we run into these things several times with alex and then we try to solve things because when you have to maintain a big like a big design system it has its challenges. Hopefully this will work. Yes, it works. <laughs> so for instance, I can switch off the secondary button and then it just disappears. And I could also create the mobile, I mean, switch to mobile view, which doesn't make sense here. So I wouldn't do that. Then um, these sections, uh, let, me, let me go back to the challenge page to show you something. So here I pasted, yes, this uh, image, which means that you have kind of total freedom within the content, right? I mean, we would like you to keep the navigation and the breadcrumbs, if they make sense, um, and the footer, and then the content, that's your call. Uh, and this is when I would like to open something else that you have already seen because Alex showed it. Not this one, but this one. Um, I would also like to ask you to check check out these uh, already existing designs. Uh, you will see that even we are not designing the exact same experience for each product, but we have some kind of freedom. And that is where challenges and you guys, the community come into the picture um because uh, you could also create something which is you know which which uh, follows the design system but have slight slightly different patterns in it or um well actually uh, this product that you have to work on the development center it's like for instance more uh, complex than for instance the on onboarding in the onboarding we don't really need a secondary navigation or nothing like that uh it's it's easy but you guys have like a bigger task now to figure out how or what kind of of a, if, if you like to call it a secondary navigation i don't even want to lead with this kind of ids or um phrases if you like uh so i would like to ask you to check these out to get a feeling of of the freedom you have uh based on the strict, I mean, besides the strict rules of uh, of the design system. So for instance, if you if you look at this one, the Learn app, it has the wave, it's a little bit more colorful or playful, playful compared to the first one, the work app, which is utility. So it's, it's not that it doesn't have the wave and colorful stuff, but the Learn app, it's, it's a little bit more 
smoother. I don't know how to call it. And then we also have these product intake forms, which is um, this product is for clients. So if they want to start work, start start some work with Top Coder, then they would end up on these pages and they could post their um, their requirements. You know these uh, these challenges if you like. So this is again uh, some this is again a little bit different for a different approach uh, for a different purpose. Okay, so let me go back to somewhere maybe here. So um, in this page template, I only have two other things that that's left, uh, which is the content, if you like. Uh, it's just there for a placeholder. It is really just a placeholder, except that why we have two it's because there is a divider between between two sections so this is also um, the aim is to show you that we are using these dividers when we would like to uh, divide two sections okay um let me check back here and it will look silly because you will see the unlimited screen if anyone have any questions or something that I could go into or, you know, or Alex, you could also join me and, uh, and figure out something. What, what else we should, we should show, uh, these guys. Uh, yes, Vicky. So I think that maybe we can show them how, how to find assets in the asset list page. Yes, absolutely. Yes, uh, for example, we, if, we, they, we, if they want to search for any particular component, uh, uh, yeah. a status so, stack or a button or ship or, or whatever. Uri is asking where he, where, where he can find the, the Figma file. Uh, so right now we are running a design challenge for the Top Coder Developer Center. So we the task is to... Um, why not we choose build? No, the task is to uh, to design um, the developer center. And in this challenge, so if you register to the challenge, then you can uh, then you have access to the forum, to challenge forum, and there you have the links uh, where you can find the design system. Because we don't want to, you know, put it out there and spread it all over the place. Because uh, we have like Alex has a lot of effort in it and even if we are sharing it with you uh it's it's a it's a big it's a great value so we don't want to share it on the on the you know on the challenge page uh but that that is how you can get access to it so let me try to show some things right here assets so figma figma interface um on the left side we have we have these uh i don't know how it's called i'm sorry so yeah we have our like layers, layers, pan layers panel and the asset it has some name so the layers panel where you have the pages and you have your layers as well just like in any, any other uh, design tool and then we have the assets but i go back for this i will go back to this file which you are you, you will be using uh, same thing, the layers and the assets. And if you would like to look for something, um, then you would have to click on the assets and start to type, like, for instance, buttons, button, and then, oops, some things. I'm sorry, these are my other, other works. If you see some, um, if you have some other published libraries in your, Figma tool, then they would show up. But this is ours, obviously. Uh, you can just grab it and and just drop it on on the canvas. Sometimes it's not easy if you are using um, if you are using auto layouts. Sometimes it's not easy to to place it to the right place where you want it. So if I wanted to put it under the text, then okay, it's there. But if you have more complex auto layouts nested in, with, uh, into each other, then many times I'm just I'm just like cutting it and select the right frame I want to paste it and then I can paste it to the right place. Um, so uh, for instance, you can search like this buttons or the input, the input field or anything else. If you have a 
rows through the uh, the entire design system, you will kind of know what you can find here. Or another another where is it? Why didn't I see them? It's here. Yes. So another um, option would be browsing here in the assets uh, panel. You could um, try to find them based on uh, based on the structure. So for instance, the atoms are on the top and the molecules, and maybe we can check the icons. We just have one icon because it's, uh, it's, it's an interesting one. I haven't seen this done this way earlier. So we have one single icon component and the actual icons are properties of the icon component. So on the other side, on the design panel, because now I know it, um, we have the three uh, the, the three uh, properties of the icon component, the size, the style, and it's called design. So it's the actual icon. And then if you open it, you will see all the types of icons. For instance, Euro, that would be a Euro sign. Uh, and then we have two types. We have the solid ones, and then we have the outline, outline ones, and for different sizes are there as well. So this is the other um, way you can you can select um, these um, components. For instance, I just found the button CTA, button CTA, which I mentioned earlier. However, we already have one. Anyway, I could drag it, drag and drop it, uh, and then use the right uh, variation of, of this. Uh, if you are newer to Figma, so for instance, if you are not using, if you don't know what auto layouts are, I highly recommend you to take a look around on the internet and find some tutorials. Figma has great uh, tutorials because they obviously they want to attract designers to use their tool. Um, so I would highly, highly recommend you to find out about auto layouts, which got new functionalities and it's, it's a really powerful, it's a really powerful tool. Um, and for yes, instance, and actually, sorry, because and actually the, the auto layout feature will allow you to design better and faster. Uh, is, okay. is, this is good, actually, when you are building real products, because you are keeping all the distances uh, inside every box, for example, the paddings, the margin, they will be uh, equally uh, made across your design so we really uh, invite you to use auto layout as much as possible in, in your design every component with me is fully compatible with with auto layout actually they have auto layout internally uh, for the, for example the buttons on the form they are using auto layouts however if you want to design a new screen without using the template uh, um, you want to start grabbing the component from the list to your new design. For example, you want to grab the header, you want to grab the breadcrumbs, the footer, whatever. Uh, it is important if you start using auto layout because you will have a, a consistent design in all your new pages that you are designing. I was just going to to try, I mean, to, to show one example uh, about it, uh, I mean, about the auto layouts. It could be a little bit difficult to get your head around it. I mean, whenever I met someone who just started to use it, they were confused first, but then whenever, whenever you get the grasp, get a grasp on it, it's, it's really cool. What I wanted to do is that show you something. So for instance, let's check uh the middle page here you can see that we have this pattern for form kind of content that we have a section we have a section uh, header and then we have some kind of a content which would uh, which would define that section i mean tell you what to do and then uh, on the right side we have the actual components and i was thinking about creating something like this out of out of um, uh, of our 
little section here, for instance, the top section, I already grabbed uh, an input field. And as I said, I usually place it on, on, on the canvas. Don't go ahead and just place it here. However, it's, it could be okay, even like this. And now you can see, I have to check the, the structure. Now you can see that we have we actually have one auto layout. This is an auto layout. This frame is an auto layout, um, which has three uh, elements, uh, a section header, the sec the copy, the, the text there. And now I place that input, input field there. Now, to be honest, I don't know what's the right, I mean, what's the proper way or what's, what's you know, the default way uh, of dealing with this, but I usually just select um, the things that I want to put into another auto layout, it will be nested into our outer frame. Uh, and my aim is to have the text on the left side as we have on the onboarding uh, forms, for instance. Now I would like to do that, put the text on the left side and um, the input box on the right side and in the, um, in the future. So as a next step, uh, I will create more, um, I will add more input fields into that form section. So now we have selected um, the copy and uh, the input field. And there is, I just forgot, <laughs> there is a keyboard shortcut. I also advise you to learn keyboard shortcuts if you are new to a tool or a new designer or, you know, not a, you don't even have to be a designer, any, anything, um, any work could be made quicker if you know the shortcut. So it's shift A, uh, it, it's not conscious anymore because I'm using it every day. I have no idea if you ask me what the shortcut is, it's shift A, or you could use uh, the plus sign here as well. Um, auto layout. So on the right design panel, you can see the auto layout section of the panel. And then here you can select uh, which direction the auto layout should go. So if I select the horizontal uh, direction, then, uh, okay, and this is where the problem starts, then uh, it will um, immediately arrange your, uh, your nested element into a, into a horizontal, into a row, if you like. And now you have to fix uh, what you see on the screen that, oh, oh, where is the input box? And as you can see, because of the selection, it's now it's out of the, of the outer frame and we have to fix it. And how you fix it, it's um, here uh, in the in this resizing setting and you would have to set this frame to fill the container, not hug the content. Now, probably you understand uh, if you think, of, think about it. So now it's hugging the existing content, that's why it's uh, wider, but I would like to fill the container so it's not big, not larger than the container. Okay, but still it's not there. Why is that? It's because even the nested element has to be set to something else. And I already selected the copy inside and the input inside. And again, now they are fixed. They are set to fixed resizing. I mean, it's not resizing. Uh, and also these should be um, set to fill, for instance, if you want to want them to have uh, the same uh, proportion of the of the container i mean the same size in the container and now you can see we are pretty close to what we have seen on in uh, the onboarding uh, pages what i would also do is uh, modifying um, the gap between the two which i can also do on the side in the auto layout section of the design properties panel I will set it to 40. I think we used 48 there. And then that's it. What else you can do? It, it won't fit the, the actual page, but let me just quickly show you what else we can do here. For instance, we can uh, modify the... And this, this is actually a new feature, what you see, the pink one. You can modify uh, the padding and you can modify it in a way that both of them are uh, being modified yeah modified and now you can also with shift and what's that option all the four can be modified at the same time so this is very powerful 
you need some time to to learn it, but then that time will come back to you because you won't have to you don't you, you won't have to work that much on creating these again and again but it's you know you don't have to maintain all these gaps and paddings and stuff like that and if i would like to create like another input box under this uh, again this will be tricky because if you if i duplicate this text box obviously what do you think what will happen i'll give you a couple of seconds you don't have to write it because i'm not seeing it but if I duplicate this now, what do you think where it will go? And now I will press my command D, duplicate. And as this auto layout was set to be horizontal, that's why the duplicates, I mean the copy, will also follow this. So it will, it will um, end up beside the other uh, box. And what I would do here is again, select those two, which I want to put in another uh, frame create this out another auto layout with shift a now they are horizontal i have to set them to vertical oh yeah and then i have to uh, modify some uh, some settings here for instance pulling them closer to each other and maybe if i want to maintain the proportions between the two sections then i have to keep on and going uh, down to the into the structure just to uh, set this to fill type of resize and then here we go i think it's done yes and for those who already work in figma and uh used to work in sketch for instance like me and i think alex as well uh, as i said a couple of days ago we got this update and our components haven't been, hasn't been haven't been changed yet. Of course, we have to be very careful what we change now, because many products have many kind of a couple of products have already been um, designed with the with the design system. So if I if you change something, it will it, it may crush the designs on the other side. So we have to be very careful when doing things like this. So good news, you won't see it on my screen now, but. Uh, you can have component properties now, which means that, for instance, a label or the placeholder text uh, in the input field could be in, in the future when we set it could be changed on on the panel, like in sketch. So I could change many. So, for instance, I have 10 buttons all over uh, more um, pages. I could select them and then change their label with one setting, maybe with one uh, Change. I don't have to go ahead and click into this button and change the labels. And that was painful earlier a little bit. Yes. Okay. Anyone has have any questions? Yes, there was a question about prototyping. And I, I'm going to steal your screen for one second to show okay. you. I, I, I think you are, you guys are able to see my screen. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, no? No, I think mine is on. Really? Now can you see my screen, I think? Yes? I can. <laughs> okay, perfect. Uh, let me do something. Let me move this one to my other screen. Okay. Perfect. So there, there was a question about uh, prototyping. Um, for example, if you want to add like a hover effects or, or anything similar for interactivity, now the component has those effects already built. So let me show you, for example, if I go to the to the buttons and uh, I'm sorry, um, I want to show you the pro uh, what I did. And I wanted to show you the prototyping. All the buttons, they have the different effects, for example, hover, preset, disable, and they are already linked at the component level. So for example, if you are designing and you want to prototype something like, like what I did here, like for example, I just want to, to, if I click here, this will take me here. And then I go to see the prototype, you will see that the hover effects is already working because it is at the 
component level. The same for the breadcrumbs, uh, for every other component or element that, that has interactivity, like main navigation, secondary button, primary button, breadcrumbs, the, all the interactions, they are already in the component level. So when you are prototyping, you don't need to focus anymore on, on states like, for example, uh, while hovering, while pressing. You, you, uh, the only thing that you have to focus is when click. So on click, uh, uh, the screen will take you to other screen. So that's why we are providing all the different interactions in the component level. So this will simplify it a lot the prototyping whenever you need to prototype anything. So this was the question about prototyping. Oh, I can still and, talk. Oh, sorry. Because I've seen that people asked uh, about, and I've seen him uh, asking about justified text, and I just wanted to answer, but why not talk if I can? Um, actually, justified text is uh, um, does uh, decrease readability. So in the accessibility standards, they are advising against it. It's because you would have different uh, gaps between between the between the words, and that makes your brain harder to. You know, to, I mean, your eyes and brain to perceive the text. So it's actually not a good thing to use. Exactly. Um, it's actually very important that you uh, or everyone who is actually designing in in uh, using our, our our new design system that every text that you add for uh, should be left aligned and not. Uh, center aligned. So, for example, let's imagine I am creating like a hero banner. Uh, I, as you can see, I use one of the gradient that we have already from 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 our design system, from our style, and the same for the typography. For example, if I want to use like a very long title hero, one second, I just go to the styles and pick the the hero that I want to use, okay? And I already have the style. And, uh, so I don't have to be changing any font sizing or whatever. So everything will be already already with the style from the design system. So if I am designing a page and for example, I, I, I need uh, uh, any particular, I have to detach this one for one second. It's like everything is changing from, <laughs> with a new update from Figma. Okay, so if I want to change the different styles for typography, you only have to go to here and pick the style that you need. For example, you need an H4 or H2 or whatever. You just only have to pick the style here. And if for some reason you want to see the global styles, the only thing you have to do is to click anywhere outside your frame and you will see the different styles we have for text. You will see two main categories, desktop and mobile. So in desktop, you will see all the different uh, categories we have for desktop, for uh, for example, hero titles, that uh, uh, like the one that I just use here. We have subtitles, we have the body copies with the different variation, like small, medium, bold. We have quotes, for example, if you are using something, and uh, let me show you really quick. If you want to provide like a test, uh, a quote or a, 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 a testimony from, from, from one of our members, you can just type here quote and you will find the style for that particular text that you are thinking. So it's really, it's really good to have all the different styles already created so you don't have to be like reinventing the wheel. And the same for the colors. In colors, so I just show you the text style, but in colors, you also have different categories. So you have like, like the colors you, you, you can use for text on white background, then you have the color to use in status tags, and then the global color, which is like, all the colors we have in our top color 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 palette in, in the case you want to create something very unique and then we have the different gradients 
we have the gradient uh, linear and then we have gradients that actually pass accessibility. This is very important in the case you want to add a text over the gradient that, that like the one that I did here. And then we have the community color. We have gradients per per track. For example, if you are if you are designing uh, a banner for let's say design track, you can use the design gradient. So you will see the, 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 the name here. This is development, this is design, this is QA and, 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 and so. So you will you will click on design gradient and now you have the gradient that we are using for design. And the same we have for top color flat colors, we have the top color handles colors, and we have the, the different awards for gold, bright, silver and bronze. Uh, so as you can see, we have a lot of elements. I know this is gonna take like a, a very long time to learn how to how to use the components, especially if you are not like a Figma designer and you come from Adobe XD or from a, a Sketch, and you will have to to pass through a, a learning curve. But this is really valuable in the future because you will be designer designing faster. So I really encourage you to, 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 to start using Figma in the case that you still don't use it. So there are a lot of free courses in, in YouTube, in the, um, in the internet, and you can just use our design system to start learning how to, to use uh, the different properties and the power of Figma. So I really invite you all to start using Figma. Well, this is what we have questions. for today. Now we are over the hour. Yes, Vicky? Oh, sorry. No, we, we had two more questions, but mm -hmm. can, I can answer them on Discord or quickly. You guys want to hear them? <laughs> so it was just people asked about the line, line what's that, the text width. Uh, and that's important. I, I want to answer that because what you have seen in the in the page template that's just a template that's just a placeholder like never use that white text because that's always that's also one of these um, very important accessibility standards is that i think that they suggest 80 characters maximum or on average so 80 is the one that they uh they figured out probably through research and stuff that that is the uh the go the the gold, uh, what's that? You know, <laughs> um, the the good place to be with uh, with the width of your uh, text. So please don't use that that long one, which I have in the which we have in the in the design system. And also, you had another question about the accessibility. So also the gradients, as Alex just mentioned, that we have two sets. One of them uh, is darker, is the access the accessible one. So the name suggests as well that's the word for accessibility. The uh, the darker ones, and they would always fit with with, uh, with comply uh, with white text. So that's why we created the darker one. So you can make sure that white text will be visible and uh, visible for everyone. That's it. <laughs> yes, thank you, Vicky. Okay, so I think that if we don't have more questions, so I invite you guys, feel free to reach out to us in, in, in the chat later in Discord. So we are really happy to, to help you to understand the design system, to help you on your path while using the design system. So we want you to use the design system. So please don't, if you feel blocked for any reason, just let us know and we will be very happy to help you. Exactly. Yes. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for um, your team and attention. <laughs> and have a very good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever in the world you are. <laughs> Thank you.